What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're taking a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart, but we've got a bunch to jump around and look at. We'll start here with Bitcoin. At, since you know last week, it's still just battling up here against the 100-day moving average. Price has still been ranging ever since we popped out from the lower 19,000s, getting all the way up to just barely hitting 21,000 and now still bouncing around at 20,500. So nothing dramatic has happened to price action for Bitcoin over the course of the last week, just remaining within this range underneath the 100-day moving average, of course, within the bigger range. So we haven't really missed anything happening here for Bitcoin at this time. A bigger move would be if we did break out above 21,000, then we'd say, oh, look, something interesting has happened in here. But ever since last week, since the big move that we had in here, nothing nothing big to say. I would say the only real major development we had happen here in the market is potentially over here with the Bitcoin dominance, which of course we've been tracking for 18 months as it's been stuck in this range, waiting to see if something would emerge. Last week we were talking like, hey, you know, this is the perfect time for some type of catalyst to emerge, whether it's the puppet masters pulling the puppet strings, God or simulation, but we're prepared for some type of catalyst to emerge here because in this type of ranging structure, this is the final point, right? We're at the end. Is this the breakdown to happen in here? I don't know if we have seen a catalyst happen yet. There's definitely been interesting things happening. But when we look at Bitcoin dominance, what are we saying? We're saying that if the Bitcoin dominance is going to go down, then altcoins would be outperforming Bitcoin collectively. And as you likely know, this is what a lot of the crypto charts look like out here in the cryptocurrency market and in the altcoin market. But Sure enough, there you go. As you probably have heard, Dogecoin has taken a bump every time Dogecoin comes up on the screen. Really? Are we talking about Dogecoin? <laughs> Only when there's something crazy happening. But we can see that the price has moved up drastically, a big firing out in just a matter of a couple of days. We can look through the market to see that most things look like this. And that was actually the same setup that XRP had before it broke out of its range. But sprinkled all throughout the market is what a lot of these do look like. So I posted about this on Twitter over the weekend. 24 weeks of torture gets wiped out in a matter of five days. That is so common in crypto. People wonder how can you remain positive during the negative time periods. And I tried to remind people of this when we were really in the excitement phase back in 2021 that we spend most of our time like this in the cryptocurrency market. It's very clear on the charts. You can go out and just zoom out even if you want to look at just Doge to say to understand your time spent in this market is that look how much time is actually spent in bull runs and here and then look how much time is spent in torture. And then when you look at the moments of the actual excitement that happened in here, that's your excitement phase. That's your excitement phase. And that's your excitement phase. But otherwise, from a time perspective, look how much more time is spent like this. Look how much more time is spent like this. So the exciting times are short lived. And so a lot of times I have to go into it thinking this is just how it is most of the time. And that eventually something big eventually does come. And what will happen usually, of course, we all know once the excitement comes, they're unwilling to buy it low. They will only buy it high. But I'm not here to do do on Doge. I don't know if this is the end of the move for Doge. I do know that when XR RP had the exact same structure. It got paused out and it's been reaccumulating at this point, or at least it wasn't able to get much further. So as Doge has done a similar move, I think the same. Of course, a lot of people will say, well, it's because Elon bought Twitter. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, narrative showing up when they're supposed to. But I highly, I highly doubt this would be just a Doge move. Do I think it's showing up at great timing? For sure. Do I think Doge is going to take over the whole cryptocurrency market? <laughs> Highly unlikely, I would think. Highly unlikely. However, this is all very interesting. And if you've been paying attention over the last 24 hours, a lot has been going on in the market from a regulation narrative. Yesterday, Coinbase filed an amicus brief in support of Ripple's fair notice defense. For those of us who have been in here for years, we're coming up on almost two years since this lawsuit started. It has felt like Coinbase has sat on the sidelines quietly. Suddenly, they have entered themselves into the courts in support of Ripple. There's actually been like 10 that have entered in as amicus briefs into the court, one of them being Blockchain Association. I had posted here on Twitter last week, we've waited a long time in the XRP community for support from the rest of the crypto community. It took a long time to get it. I'm not going to turn it down with resentment. All are welcome. Let's win this together. So is it frustrating that it took them this long to do it? You better believe it is. But are they doing it? They are. 
So typically narratives aren't that predictable, but we're definitely seeing massive amounts of the big players in the crypto ecosystem come out in support of Ripple in the courts to be a friend of the court in support of Ripple. And you may be wondering if this has more to do with Ripple or with XRP than the whole crypto community. Well, if Ripple loses the lawsuit and you know they can't use fair notice, then every crypto out there is in extreme danger. And for us who have been in the XRP community following this whole thing for so long, we kind of recognize that situation that's happening there. There's been a lot of tribalism in the market of, you know, forget about Ripple, forget about XRP, who cares? Not recognizing the consequences of what would happen in this court case if Ripple is to lose. But we also recognize that if Ripple is able to win and if they're able to get clarity, that's good for the whole market. So XRP community members might have an advantage in the market by understanding understanding that, but we just have to wait and see if anything develops from it. Again, we look at the charts here on the channel, right? What are the charts telling us? The charts are telling us if this structure is true, we're at this last phase, right? Is there going to be a narrative that emerges with it? If there is, what do people typically do when narratives happen? Same thing with Doge, right? Go buy Doge right now because Elon bought Twitter is the thought process out there. But if this thing starts breaking down, people will say, well, why are the altcoins taking off? Why is everything happening? It's because, well, because the SEC case is over. But blockchain backer over here has been playing with magical unicorn dust and says... <laughs> Well, we were structurally supposed to do it. Now we got to watch the structures. But then people will be thinking to themselves, no, 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 we're, we're, we're not done. This isn't done yet. We just got started by the time you get down here. Right. And you say, well, no, that was really the extension of the move. That's the, the setup we had for 18 months. I understand that you, you didn't pay attention to that for 18 months, but now you're paying attention now that it has broken down and you got to get a narrative to go along with it. Uh, but then, of course, I'll be looking for the magical unicorn dust to, to change things around the other way. Either way, I don't really know where this is all going, but I'm last week we were talking about looking for some type of narrative to emerge. What are the things that have, have, have happened since that video of saying, waiting to see if some type of a narrative emerges is one, Elon completes the acquisition of Twitter and Dogecoin pumps, and two, Coinbase just filed an amicus brief in support of Ripple. <laughs> Crazy. And in that time, we have seen the dominance start to move. Still a long ways to go, but it has begun moving. Moving along to look at the altcoin market from a bigger perspective. So we're talking about, you know, the Bitcoin dominance turning over. Well, you know, is it just Doge that's taken off? Is it just XRP that's going to be taken off? Can we look at the whole crypto market as a whole to see any type of like bullish elements happening here in the altcoin market cap? One, we did hit that 200 week moving average back there in June. Now we've come back real close to it again, but you know, last week we actually did get a pop out of there. And finally, just like there over in Bitcoin, we have the 50 week and the 100 week that have officially crossed, which in 2019, once that had happened, the bottom had already come in prior to that, right? What did it do? It bounced off the bottom, set a higher low by this point, and was kind of grinding its way by the time we got back to here. Look what has happened so far. It bounced off the lows, bouncing up. Here we are. Um, one thing, look at the RSIs as well, as you can see how the RSIs dip down here to these oversold levels, oversold, and we can see printing a bullish divergence emerging out in here, which is also what was going on back in here as well, is that you could see that it was starting to kind of on the relative strength, it was starting to break out prior to it actually really breaking out. And you know, this is the nitty gritty, um, but we could see that it was getting out here before a real breakout actually emerged. So the breakout occurred back in here, but we were already starting to print a bullish divergence emerging in there and that we can see that we have already begun that right there. So I'm optimistic on it. I like the way the Bitcoin dominance looks and I like that these things have happened, right? I understand everybody wants to say from time and time, we have to break down because it's November. That's cool. Like if you if we were going to speculate like that, but that's not like measurable. That's just guessing months. This is the stuff that I can look at. I could say, this is what has happened before. This is where we're at right now. Cool. That makes me optimistic. And we'll actually have a whole video dedicated specifically to the total altcoin market cap this week that I'm pretty excited to point out because I'm bullish on it. I'm optimistic. Moving over to XRP. Big day for XRP as XLS20 has gone live on the XRP ledger to allow the minting of NFTs. Posted over here this morning, XLS20 went live on XRPL yesterday. Platforms are getting their ducks in order before fully launching. So hoping to hear announcements later today for when all platforms are ready for go mode. So we haven't seen significant minting yet until the platforms say it's time to go. 
Over the last week, I've put out several videos discussing what's going on in the NFT world for the XRP ledger and XRP communities. I've seen a lot of people hoping for a quick pump. Um, <laughs> I, for me, I think of it more of as a long-term way that value can be built on the ledger, not necessarily that we get some type of like news pump because it's happening, but because it's a long-term play for value to build on the ledger and to see what developments are coming out in the future. We uh, did videos this week discussing the different NFTs coming out on the XRP ledger, but that's just the initial stuff, right? Right? What's going to happen with the development over time? As for the actual price chart, still just hovering here, like teetering, like it just wants to come back to that 39 cents. We've talked about that for a couple of weeks, just in this range. Of course, we've been talking about it since it came all the way up here back in late September. Guess what? It's now November. We're still waiting on it to see what it's going to do. Um, but still, it just would not in any way surprise me for us to see 37, 39 cents for XRP. So in summary, the last several days, right, we've gotten through the weekend, we've closed out the month, we've closed out the week. What we saw is we saw Bitcoin dominance is starting to make a slight move to the downside. We saw Dogecoin pump significantly. We've seen bullish divergences emerge over there on the total altcoin market cap as it still continues to maintain the 200 week moving average and maintain the lows. We've seen several companies and big players in the cryptocurrency market come out in support of Ripple in the courts filing amicus briefs. And at the same time, XLS20 has gone live over there on the XRP ledger, hopefully by today minting will really get going i'll keep you guys updated on that trust me i'm watching it like a hawk to relay that to you guys otherwise nothing wild in price action lots of ranging now that it's a new month and monthly candles are closed out we'll see how the month starts out and we'll see if we keep getting more filings and more news coming in in regards to ripple keeping this video relatively short since not many significant changes outside of doge pumping and the bitcoin dominance starting to fall but at the same time, we do have some news events that have happened. XLS20 went live, Coinbase in support of Ripple. So we'll keep an eye on it. One thing that we do have is tomorrow, there's another FOMC meeting. It's expected that there's going to be a 75 basis point rate hike. So that's tomorrow. A lot of times we see some volatility leading up to that moment. We see volatility in the thick of that moment, usually right when Jerome Powell comes up on stage or right when they release their notes. And then when it's over, we kind of see maybe what the real move is. A lot of times you can get a fake out move, um, but expect it likely what we have seen historically is volatility into that actual moment of the meeting tomorrow in both broader markets. And that usually translates into the cryptocurrency markets, but we're still just kind of sitting back waiting for that to happen. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'll check in with you soon once I have more information on XLS 20. Otherwise, I hope that you have a great day. I hope you had a safe Halloween. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.